hello, John. I hope you're okay. Yeah, fine, fine. Or should I even say good evening because it's about 10 p.m. I think in Australia right now. Yeah, it's 10 p.m. and uh, on a quite a cold night. <laughs> Uh, this year, small talks are a bit difficult uh, topic because of the pandemic, but I just have to ask what's the situation right now in Australia with uh, coronavirus? It's, it's sort of mixed. Um, I'm in New South Wales, Sydney, uh, and it's not too bad here. Uh, Victoria, our southern state, is in a very bad way. They've, they've locked off the borders. Uh, and Queensland, which is our other neighbouring state, um, has also shut down the borders. So. Um, we're free to travel in New South Wales, but we can't go into the other states. So do you miss uh, meeting people? Do you, do you miss uh, talking to your readers? Because just before we went live, you mentioned that you were supposed to come to Poland this year. Yeah, I was hoping to. I was uh, scheduled to go to Holland and um, I thought I'll go to Poland again too. Right? You know, if I'm flying that far, I might as well see two places. and. Um, I had such a great time in Poland last last time I came, which I think was five years ago. I thought I'd love to go back, um, but it, it all obviously fell through. Um, the event in Holland was cancelled, um, and so I didn't go. And yes, I do miss that. Um, it, it's I was looking forward to it. So, John, let's uh, jump back to 2004 uh, when you published your first book. But although uh, you, you pub published your first novel uh, in 2004, as I mentioned, uh, you have always uh, earned uh, a living working with words. So did copywriting and penning TV scripts prepare you for a life of an author more than college and youthful plans? Uh, definitely. Uh, in fact, I, I didn't um, study writing in college. Um, I did two university. Uh, I did two years, uh, basically doing accountancy. Uh, but the experience uh, writing in advertising and television definitely, definitely prepared me. Uh, advertising teaches you to get an idea across in the smallest possible number of words, and television taught me how to plot a story. Uh, I will just say now a few words in Polish to our viewers and uh, your readers to encourage them to ask you some uh, questions. Okay, so coming back to our conversation, it's uh, widely known that the Rangers Apprentice series began as uh, stories written for your son, uh, Michael, and that was uh, your, so to say, training ground. But uh, as you are encouraged by your daughter to make a full-fledged novel out of them, uh, weren't you a bit skeptical about the idea as you have been rejected by publishers before? That's, that's a good question. Um, I, no, I don't think I was skeptical. I think I was hopeful. Uh, I had had books uh, rejected before, uh, which is a horrible experience. Uh, but I thought, I, I thought there was something a bit special about, about these. And my daughter was very encouraging, as was my wife. Uh, so can you say that Ranger's Apprentice uh, series is more of a family affair, or at least it started as one? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, in fact, you know, the, the interesting thing to me uh, is that I'd had probably seven or eight books rejected prior to this over a period. I actually never intended these stories to be a book. It was my daughter's suggestion that triggered that idea. And, and in addition, I had um, I had a very supportive uh, and encouraging agent uh, who really got behind the books when I wrote them. And in fact, I, I started out to write one book, and uh, she said it's too long. I'll never sell it at this length. So I said, "What about if I cut it in half and make it two books?" And she said, that, "That'd be good." And then it kept growing, and it became no four books. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I remember is that the stories you made up for, for your son, for Michael, didn't really encourage him to read more. Is that right? Um, sorry, I'm not sure if you said it didn't encourage him or it did. It, he did start enjoying reading. Um, he loved those stories. Uh, and when I wrote the books, 
before they were published, I had them printed out um, mm -hmm. in, in book form. I printed them out in book form and he just kept the four first books. And they were dog-eared and torn and, and, and ratty by the end of it, but he just read them over and over again. Uh, and it did, it, it did show him that reading could be enjoyable and so he did become more of a reader uh, because of them. Um, mm -hmm. He's very proud of the fact that Will is modelled on him and he refers to himself as the original will. Mm -hmm. uh, when your first book was, was published, the word has, uh, had already gone mad about Harry Potter. And paradoxically, I guess it wasn't the best time to introduce your own fantasy story, as there were so many J.K. Rowling clones on the market. So, or maybe it was the, the other way around. Maybe it was easier to introduce something original then. Uh, J.K. Rowling really paved the way for a lot of us. Um, because everybody was looking for the next um, mm -hmm. Harry Potter. And so, and also she showed publishers that children would read books that were more than, you know, 30 pages long. Uh, I mean, I, I remember seeing my next door neighbor's child with a nose buried in a, in a 600 page Harry Potter novel. And that, that meant we could write really good, well formed, long books, uh, and kids would read them. And that might be a perfect time to ask uh, one of uh, questions from our readers. That one is from the message board, not not from Facebook, and it's uh, asked by Paula. Uh, if, you had, uh, if you had a chance to go back and change anything in the Rangers Apprentice uh, series, what would it be? I don't. I don't know that I'd change anything. Um, I wanted to, I, in the first book. The prologue is very. Or well, the original prologue is very, very wordy and heavy and uh, quite ponderous, and I, I, I wanted to change that uh, when we came to the second printing, and both my publisher and agent said, "No, don't change anything. It's working." And I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe if I went back and changed something, the whole thing had stopped working. So I, I just leave it. Uh, we received about, I, I don't know, about 200 questions in the last 48 hours. And uh, some of them, many of them, actually asked about uh, Alice and about uh, her fate. No spoilers here. So that's what readers want, really, I think. Um, yeah, yeah I, I know a lot of them want me to change that. Um, I, I get suggestions. I had one the other day. Um, on email on how I could bring her back, how she survived. Um, <laughs> she's gone. <laughs> so sorry, readers, you got the answer you weren't really looking for. Uh, so John, is writing for, for young readers liberating or limiting for you as an author, and so why? It's incredibly enjoyable, uh, and I think Liberating, I don't know, that. just a lot of fun. I think because kids will tell you what they think. That they, that are like I get so many emails and I love being in touch with my readers. Um, and much more, I've had a couple of adult books published and, and adults don't write to the author. And they don't send him story ideas. And st and kids just get so involved. And they're such a fascinating audience. And there's, there's another thing that um, I really value, and that is I have an ongoing, I continually get uh, emails from children and parents saying how um, my books have, they weren't interested in reading, and my books have got them into reading and got them to enjoy reading. And as a result of that, their schoolwork has improved and their marks have improved. And, and in some cases, their lives have changed. And that's, that's the most wonderful feeling. That's actually what people are saying in the comments on Facebook right now. And so mm -hmm. at some point, you, you took a kind of a break from uh, Rangers Apprentice, from the main series, and started crafting Brother Band as a pin off series of sorts. So what was the reason for that decision? Was it artistic or commercial or both? I had originally intended to write 12 books in the Rangers series. I knew what the last book was going to be. And as I got up to around eight or nine, 
I thought, well, if I finish at 12, I'm going to have to have something else to do. So that's when I started developing Brother Band, um, using the same world and a lot of the same characters. But um, I enjoy switching from one to the other now. So is, is there a chance that one day you will explore other cultures in your books? Because Brother Band is, is based more or less on Viking culture and so on. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't... I don't have any plans to write any other series at this this stage. Um, as you probably noticed, I didn't stop at 12 with Rangers Apprentice and uh, Brother Band's still going. Uh, I've just finished um, one of, uh, I think, number five in the Royal Ranger series. Um, that's with the publishers now. And I'm, I've got plans for another Brother Band. So, uh, no, I don't think I'll go to... Mm -hmm. At this stage, you know, I've got what we call a full dance card, you know. And uh, I think one can say that your readers grew up with Will, but did they carry the fascination with uh, Rangers into adulthood or rather introduced your books to the younger generation? Judging from emails that I get, get um, a, lot of, a lot of the readers who started with the series when they were young have grown up with it and have stayed with it. Uh, as I have a lot of... Uh, readers now who are in their late teens and their 20s. Um, strangely enough, I, I, at one stage I was getting a lot of emails from um, young men in the American military. I, I have a feeling the books might have been being sold in their post exchanges. Uh, and um, I was getting yeah, e emails from uh, people who are serving in Afghanistan and uh, the Middle East. Um, so I think... Often they stay with it as they get older. And so on Facebook, Zbigniew asked about 11 questions. Uh, so some of them are actually mine questions that I'm planning to, uh, that I'm planning to ask. But the one is uh, really interesting uh, and very simple, I would say. What's your favorite book? Uh, do you mean of mine or favorite uh, book? No, I think generally as a reader. But all room, yeah. Um, it's really hard because uh, there's so many good books, so many good authors. I mean, I do have a favourite all-time author, and that's an English author called C.S. Forrester, uh, who wrote the Horatio Hornblower series. I think if I was to start saying, oh, my favourite book is uh, The Once and Future King, I'd think, oh, yeah, but I also like... <laughs> yeah, there are so many. Um, once and Future King would be high on the list, I would say. So we are just consulting the Polish title of the book you mentioned. Oh, right. right. What, <laughs> no? Does it not translate directly? What's the... yeah, it has been translated, yeah. Yeah, but what's the translation of the Polish title? Uh, it's basically the same, I would say. I'm not sure oh. if Arthur would agree, <laughs> but uh, it's untranslatable a bit. That's a play of words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Too many a single one out. Too many a single one out. <laughs> and another, another question from, uh, from a reader from uh, Maya, that's from MessageBot. Uh, were your characters directly inspired by people you know? You have already partially answered that about Will, but what about other characters? Yes, uh, I, I draw from uh, other people. Um, Horace, I don't know what he's called in Polish, Will's best <laughs> friend. Um, um, is based on Michael's best friend, Michael, my son's best friend at school. And Lady Pauline um, is based on an old friend of ours, our, our, uh, one of our bridesmaids when we were married over 50 years ago. We're still in touch with her. She's a good friend. And I, I, I always visualised her when I was writing Lady Pauline, describing her. But obviously, Rangers books are loved not only for its uh, characters, but also for the world building. So how did you flesh out your world and uh, to what extent did you use the real world and fantasy worlds as your reference? Um, it's pretty obviously based on um, England and Europe. Um, I sort of, when I started writing it, I drew a rough map from memory. And if you, if you compare it to Europe, in reality, it's it's completely wrong. Uh, but the countries are uh, 
very, you know, obviously Scandia is Scandinavia, um, Chertland is Germany, um, Gallica has got, got to be France, um, Hibernia uh, is Ireland. A lot of the names, I use the old Roman names, Hibernia is an example. Um, uh, Iberon is Spain, and that's from uh, the old Roman as well, the Iberian pen Peninsula. Um, so it's it's based there, and as and then obviously there's North Africa. Um, there's one of the books is, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm running on too far now. And then there's uh, Nihon Cha, which is based, which is Japan, the uh, Japanese uh, language word for Japan is Nihon. Uh, does Ranger's song uh, have any melody or did you just uh, uh, came up with the words? It has a melody. I think that there's uh, a version of it somewhere online. Um, I wrote that um, because I, I am a musician. Um, so it's that's the, uh, the cabin in the trees you're talking about, isn't it? P probably it's a reader's question, so that's, that's what right. I assume, yeah. yeah. Y um, yes, there, there is a melody to it. Uh, don't ask me to sing it now. <laughs> I can't guarantee that I won't. <laughs> uh, and what about general research about things like archery, horse riding, etc.? Do you try everything yourself? Uh, not everything. Um, I have I've been an archer for years. I, I did archery for many years. I've always been fascinated by it. I used to ride when I was much younger, when I was living in England. Um, one day I looked down and thought, that's a long way to fall. And uh, I thought I might give that up. Most of the stuff, um, sailing, I've done that. Uh, usually I, I, I write about things I'm interested in, so I've, I've done the research already, um, not intentionally as research, but generally it's stuff I know. Um, and one more question from, from a reader uh, from message board by Maja. Uh, which character from your books would adapt to our world the fastest? I would think... Holt, um, the Rangers would, I think, because they're a very adaptable group. They're very, uh, yeah, yeah, the Rangers. And uh, the next question is something that many, many readers uh, asked about. So what's the current status of the Rangers film? There have been rumors going around it for, for many years now. And so as far as I know, the production was set to begin this June, but I guess the pandemic messed things up a bit. Uh, yes, uh, the pandemic has kind of messed things up. The producers are still very keen. Um, they're still determined to go ahead. Um, it's going to be shot here uh, in Victoria, which, as I said before, is in lockdown at the moment. Um, once things have cleared up there, uh, it'll go ahead. There has been a change. Um, the producers think that cinema is not going to recover very quickly and they've changed their plans now instead of one movie they're going to do a stream series uh, and that, that will cover the first two books and then after that they'll probably do more more series so we'll get more out of it which is great and do you have uh, do you have an actor in mind who could play will i don't believe that you have never thought about it um well of course Playing Will will be somebody new because he's only young. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's 15, 16 when it starts. Um, so I wouldn't really, I wouldn't have an idea on Will. That's going to be very interesting. My my great nephew um, is actually an actor. Uh, he's, he's 18, 19, um, but he's too tall to be Will. But I... He's, he is going to audition for the series when, when it comes up. Uh, I've got that promise from the producers. Apparently, he's very good. I haven't seen him act, uh, but he's a very nice guy, and I hope he gets a role. Well, fingers crossed. And so do, do you think that having your book adapted by, by Hollywood is a kind of ultimate honour that the outside world, uh, meaning not necessary fantasy readers, can award the writer with? Um, I think the, the value of it, it's, it's a two-edged sword because once you sell the rights, the producers or more, more uh, correctly the director can change things. Um, 
as he sees fit. So you have to trust the people you're working with that they're not going to change it too much. Um, I'm pretty confident in the people, I'm very confident in the people I'm working with. Um, I think it will stay pretty true to the book. It will change a bit. Change a bit. Um, the value to me will be it will open the books to a much wider audience. And uh, another question from our message board by Natalia. And this one also bugs me as a coffee lover. Why a ranger puts honey in his coffee? Um, well, to make it sweeter, obviously. I, I, think, I mean, I've already been taken to task by people saying there was no coffee in Europe in those times. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought if I suddenly invented sugar, that would cause real problems. So, uh, so I had to find something for them to sweeten their, uh, their coffee with. Uh, do you have any writing routines? Are you a disciplined author or you can easily say to yourself in the morning that today is not a, it's a good day to take a time off and you are not writing? I'm very disciplined because I think you have to be. Um, if you have a day where you say, I'll take the day off, you may never start again. It's a, it's a, that's a downhill slope. Mm -hmm. So I write five days a week. I write Monday to Friday, it's usually in the morning. Uh, and I write a chapter a day uh, and then I have the weekends off and then I start again. Before I start writing, I plan the entire book. I was just trying to see if I have one of my plans here, but I don't. Uh, I do an outline chapter by chapter, about maybe six lines to a chapter so I know what's going to happen in each one. And that way, when I start each day, I know what I'm going to write. Uh, so you are saying that you meticulously uh, plan your novels and so you write them chronologically and you always know how they're going to end. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Uh, when I get the idea for the story, where it starts, the, the next thing I get, the beginning, the next thing I work out is how does it end? Then you get Dark. beginning, end, you can work out through the middle. And uh, one more question from Facebook from uh, Jakub Marek about, uh, about Will. Uh, will Will ever find another love interest or is his, you know, love life uh, <laughs> finished? I don't want to sound pessimistic, but that's, that's, that's what the question is. Uh, I don't know. And the answer is, I, I don't know. I suspect not. Um, I think Alice was probably the love of his life. Um, but maybe he will. And uh, one more question from the message board from uh, Baji. Uh, is writing a bit like reading in a sense that when you can't stop working, when the plot gets really intense and interesting? It's, it's a little bit. It, the, the difference is this. I, I find I, I really enjoy writing and I, I get involved with the story. As I get towards the end of a book, I slow down. I don't want to finish. And yet when I do finish, it's great. <laughs> And uh, as a hard-working writer, do you even have time to read for pleasure? And if so, what do you read in your free time? Oh, definitely, definitely. Uh, I love reading. Um, uh, what do I read? I read American uh, detective novels. Um, Michael okay. Connolly, I think, is a fabulous writer. Uh, James Lee Burke. James Lee Burke. There's an English author who writes a lot of... Uh, stories set in World War II. His name is Max Hennessy. I'm enjoying his stuff. Uh, and historical novels, basically a lot of novels set in the um, uh, Napoleonic Wars. And uh, one more question from Facebook by uh, Gosha Biskup. Uh, is Halt's uh, sarcasm and, and humour uh, somehow influenced by your own sense of humour? Oh, yes. <laughs> And uh, the question about your upcoming book, uh, The Missing Prince, that comes out in about two weeks. Uh, uh, so with no spoilers, obviously, what can you say about it and what can readers expect? Uh, it's the next book in the Royal Ranger series with, with um, Maddie, but Will plays uh, a large part in this story as well. Uh, I like their interaction. They, they go on a secret mission to uh, Gallica. Uh, they're, they're tasked with uh, rescuing the King of Gallica's son who's being held prisoner. He's the missing mm -hmm. prince. So I suppose and I hope that's not the final book in the series. So uh, are you already planning, planning the next one or are you, you know, taking some time off after the book uh, is going to be published? Uh, I've just finished 
the the second part of that story, uh, the next book. Um, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll warn you all: the missing prince ends with a huge cliffhanger. Um, uh, but yeah, I've just finished the the completion, the second part of that, the completion of that story. And there's also one more question that uh, repeats uh, often about a possible crossover between Ranger series and Brother Band series. Is that is that even possible, or have you ever considered that? Uh, I have considered that there's been a certain amount of crossover because Gillan has featured in Brother Band, but of course, and in fact, um, the Brother Band featured in uh, the last. Uh, book with Will and Maddie. Uh, you must remember there's a big age difference between Maddie and the brother band and Will. And uh, as you mentioned, The Missing Prince uh, is a kind of a two part uh, novel. So was it intended like that? Uh, I mean, from the very beginning, or at some point you decided that, uh, you know, the story is too big to contain it in just a single volume? Uh, my publishers like me to do. Um, two-part stories and it it, uh, it lets me get uh, do put a lot more detail a lot more uh, um, events into the story it would would possibly be too big pardon me too big a book um, if I condensed it all all into one uh, this way I can put in more events more adventure so these are basically all questions I prepared for you, uh, John, today. But before I will uh, say uh, good night, I don't think I can let you go without a promise to your readers that you will come to Poland uh, as soon as it's possible. I would love to come back to Poland. Um, and I go fairly regularly to uh, Holland, as you probably the Netherlands. Uh, and I'd like to combine the two again because... I came to Poland, I think, four or five years ago, mm -hmm. and I just had the best time. I loved it. I loved the people. I loved the country. I loved the spirit in the country and the spirit in the people and that sense that you've got your country back <laughs> after all these years. And I really, really admired that. I thought that was great. And everybody was just fabulous to me and my wife. We had an amazing time there. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I definitely plan to come back as soon as I can. So, uh, thank you very much, John, and uh, have a good night. Uh, dziękuję również wszystkim, którzy, którzy nas dzisiaj oglądali. Uh, dziękuję również panu uh, Arturowi Zapowskiemu uh, za tłumaczenie. And uh, I hope, uh, John, to meet you in person maybe next year. Thank you, Patrick. Thanks for, thanks for organizing this. Um, and thank you to all my readers in Poland for reading the books and enjoying them and, and sending me emails. Okay, thank you. Terrific. Thanks, guys. Sorry, Arthur, I kept <laughs> jumping over you there. <laughs>